Hey, New Life Church. My name is Rachel, and I'm here today to introduce our Advent plan for this Christmas season. Um, there are a couple ways that you can join in with us on this. And the first is you're already here. It's daily Devo videos. We're going to have a different pastor or leader each day walking you through our theme of He Shall Reign, you know, how Jesus came to reign to be our Savior and King. And also, uh, this is a Christmas story. We're going to look at the first few chapters of Luke and tie in some of that and just study how Jesus came to us. And the other way is that you can go to the Bible app to YouVersion and you can type in He Shall Reign or New Life Church and that should bring up our 14 day reading plan. Uh, there will be written devotionals there and scripture of course where you can follow along and study this with us. And so really that theme, He Shall Reign, it all came out of these verses from Isaiah 9. Uh, so in verses 2 through 7, is, is where we're looking today. Um, in verse two is where it starts out talking about how people who have walked in darkness or have been in a land of darkness, you know, on them light has dawned, it's Jesus. You know, light is coming into the world. And then at the end of that passage, is, you know, verse six and seven, it's for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, he'll be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father. Um, and it's a wonderful, incredible promise. And as I looked at this, I was like, I'm, I'm so excited for us to lean in and study that. But before we, we go further, we need to look at a couple things, I think. And so really, we're going to jump all the way back to Genesis to the first time we see Jesus promised and prophesied. Um, and it's God himself comes to meet Adam and Eve right after they've sinned, they've messed up and brought that into humanity. But he tells Eve, hey, there's going to be a son one day who's going to come in and he's going to redeem it all. And then, um, you know, throughout the Old Testament, you keep going forward, you get to Abraham and, and you even get to David and you continue to see this promise of a king who will reign, who will bring salvation. And, um, and it's incredible. At the same time, you've got to take into account even Isaiah, where we read today. There's talk of oppression and captivity and people's sin. Um, 400 years leading up to Luke, where we're going to see Jesus' you know, birth and coming into the world, that 400 years leading up to it is actually called 400 years of silence by a lot of scholars because there weren't really these prophecies like we've heard in Isaiah. Those weren't happening anymore. And for me, that set the tone to uh, to see the story of Jesus' birth in a different way. You, know, you look at Mary, Joseph, even you know Elizabeth and Zachariah with the birth of John the Baptist. They're all in this period of 400 years of silence. They don't realize they're at the end of it until the angel of the Lord comes to them and tells them, hey, you're all going to be part of this. You're going to be part of the promise being fulfilled. It's happening right now in your life through you. And there are two things that challenge me and that that I wanted to share with you to hopefully kind of just set set our minds up to be ready for this Advent season and to learn for the next few weeks. Um, and the first thing is, you know, they're, they're here in the silence, but they're holding fast to the promise. Uh, these are promises that are hundreds of years old and they haven't seen it fulfilled. They aren't on the side that we are, where we know the story of Jesus. We know his birth and his resurrection and all of that. They don't know it, but they're holding fast to it. And so I wanna just challenge us can we hold on to the promise that he is the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, that the light is coming, that the Prince of Peace will reign? Let's remember that and hold on to the promises and remember that God is faithful. And then the other thing is, can we be ready and available for the call? When the angel came to them, they were ready. They were faithful. They were quick to lean in. Mary worships, even though she's just got this life altering news. Um, can we be people who are ready for the call? So for the next couple of weeks, maybe just keep that in your mind. Maybe today just be praying about that. God, can you can you give me um, just the focus and the attention to be to be committed to the promise to hold on to it and also to be ready for the call. Let's be looking for the new things that he's about to do this Christmas season as we wrap up this year.